Now, when we first started the Beauty Brains, uh, we actually had to do it anonymously because we still both had our jobs. And ah, when, right. <laughs> when you work for a company, you can't really cut through a lot of the marketing BS uh -huh. because you're at a company that is spelling or <laughs> sending out a bunch of that. And so, so we did it anonymously for years and, until the, the website really really sort of caught on and at that point I, I left my job and now I just do the beauty brains and my other website I do that full time let's maybe cut through some of these marketing myths oh sure there are there are lots of uh, things that people believe about cosmetics that aren't true uh, now some of them are perpetrated by the beauty industry um, <laughs> telling you that things that work that you know really don't do much more than moisturize or uh, or condition in it and the products work well but they don't work as promised. And then there are uh, NGOs or uh, I like to call them fear monger groups who yeah. uh, try to convince people that their products are, are dangerous and those are also myths and so I've sort of, I've sort of got uh, two opponents. I have the beauty industry as mm -hmm. kind of an opponent and I have these NGOs who pretend like they're for consumers but they're really, they're really not and I sort of have them and so I try uh, what we do on the beauty brands is we try to stick to science-based answers and and that's what we do and so one of the one of the key myths that people should take away from our talk here is it's a myth that the price of a cosmetic is any reflection of how well it works okay and in fact the really expensive products are often not anything not even as good as the stuff that you can go get at uh, Target or Walgreens I've recently found, um, I don't know what the brand was, but it was a thousand dollar face cream and they just listed all of these crazy ingredients, but there were so many ingredients. So is it true that the more ingredients you offer, the better the product is? I think the opposite should be true, right? Because then you get fewer of every active ingredient. Well, the reality is that ingredient names will impress consumers. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that companies will do is they'll pack a lot of things on their ingredient list even though the amount of those ingredients are just a little bit of a drop. So, yeah. in fact, this happens a lot in cosmetics. A lot of the times you, when you buy a lotion, for example, if you buy a lotion and you think you're buying an aloe lotion, right. it's really often just a standard lotion uh, where then we'll just take a drop of aloe, maybe we put in 0.01%, no and then you can advertise it as an aloe lotion because it does actually contain it, but it contains it at such a low level that it's not really doing anything. That's incredible. Uh, wow. And okay. the thing is, the consumer, you don't have a way to really know no. that a company is doing that. Right. 